A department overcome with tragedy. The men and women who vow to protect and serve, paying the ultimate price. In a span of just three weeks, the Detroit Police Department has lost two officers, their watch ending way too soon. I want to thank God for giving me a beautiful young man. In late January, Officer Glenn Dosh Jr. was shot while on a domestic violence run. He died just three days later. On Tuesday, Officer Darren Weathers killed after a training exercise went terribly wrong. Both young police officers with promising futures. And in the same span, two other officers and an off-duty Detroit Public Schools officer injured by a gunman. The violence is, is so bad right now and uh, it's almost like police officers get a, a bullseye on their back. And it's sad to hear about any officer in the line of duty uh, having something like that happen to them. Joining me now in studio this morning, Police Chief James Craig. Thanks for taking time out of your, oh. your very busy schedule to, you. to talk with us and talk us through all of this. Uh, first of all, I, I just want to get right into it as a department as a whole. How are you guys doing? Uh, you know, it's tough. Mm -hmm. We're hurting. Yeah. You know, uh, the officers are resilient. Mm -hmm. Uh, and despite that, you know, I was reflecting on uh, one of the officers was shot in the incident the other day. And I mm -hmm. went, I was at his bedside in the hospital. And the first thing he said to me is, I'm ready to go back to work. Wow. That's the kind of officers we have here in the Detroit Police Department. Wow. So I'm humbled, I'm proud, but uh, certainly it's tough. I got a call from Los Angeles from one of my colleagues who said, I don't know how you do it. Mm -hmm. He said, in fact, I decided because of what's going on in Detroit, I'm retiring. Wow. And you know, I'm excited about the work that we do here. I'm committed. Uh, it's tough work, uh, but certainly I don't think I know of another time uh, in the span of my career where I've seen this type of violence against police officers. And, and it really should just never happen. I mean, these officers are dedicating their lives to protect and serve. Absolutely. And one thing that the Detroit Police Department is big on is community policing. So the relationship that you guys have with the community is, is a special one. How do you talk with these officers once something like this happens again and again? You know, you just keep the lines of communications open. I, I got to give a lot of credit to our peer support. Uh, we have a, a peer support function that we went online probably three years ago. Mm -hmm. uh, that has worked in so many uh, grand ways in terms of, you know, healing and, and moving forward. Uh, but, you know, one of the things I've talked a lot about, you know, certainly our dealings with people suffering from mental illness. Right. That's our challenge. I mean, you know, our prayers go out to the families out in Florida, uh, the mass shooting incident there. And already we're hearing conversations surrounding that this young man was troubled. Uh, so when is it going to stop? When right. are we going to do something to fix this problem? What are your thoughts on that? What do you think is the solution when it comes to mental health illness and gun control? Is there something that you think should be done? Well, let me focus on the mental health for a moment because really the problem is it's moved away from the mental health professionals to law enforcement. So if you talk to Sheriff Napoleon in his jails, he'll tell you that anywhere between 70 80 percent of his inmate population is suffering from some type of mental illness. Okay. So what are we doing? We're treating mentally ill in the jail. We're criminalizing the mentally ill. And so teaching police officers how to mitigate uh, an incident involving a mental ill is not the answer. The answer is sustained treatment. It needs funding and it needs to happen now. Something before an incident happens. It's going to happen again. Okay. This situation in Florida, it's going to happen again. And we talk about it. We grieve. Uh, the situation involving our officers who were shot. Mm -hmm. uh, indications of mental illness. We talk about it. We grieve. We say things have got to change. But what has changed? And I'll tell you quite frankly, I'm done talking. We need people to step up and make this thing happen. Who would those people be? People who make the laws, mm -hmm. fund it, because right now uh, we're just in a vicious cycle. I mean, uh, we, we look at Florida, we look at our police officers, and we all know it's gonna happen again. It's not gloom and doom, it's the reality of the world we live in today. Can it ever be stopped? Is there a solution if you could wave your magic wand and just make it all go away? Sustained treatment in facilities. Mm -hmm. Sustained treatment in facilities. Uh, if you talk to uh, police officers who've been around for years, 
uh, when things really started to shift pre-1992 when the funding was stripped, they said they saw an immediate uptick. I'll give you another great example. So Detroit Police Department handles roughly 500 calls involving the mentally ill a month. Wow. That translates into 6,000. Of that number, roughly 1,200, 1,300 involve mentally ill persons who are armed. So you don't hear a lot about it. You don't hear about officer-involved shootings. You don't hear about officers being shot. When you look at those, those, those large numbers, mm -hmm. one, we're doing it right, but our officers are at an extreme risk when they're encountering, especially those suffering from a violent mentally ill. Yeah, they certainly are at risk. And real quick before I let you go, when it comes to recruiting new officers for the department, given the recent events, is that difficult? You know, I gotta tell you, it, it's, it's really amazing uh, at the number of people who come into the, pl the police department now. This one, a lot of departments are having trouble. Okay. But we've created what I like to say, uh, an environment of excitement. Mm -hmm. There's opportunity in the Detroit Police Department. The city is on a huge turnaround. Mm -hmm. So people want to be part of that. And so it works for us. But I will tell you, these young people come in eager to do the work. Mm -hmm. They understand the dangers. Uh, I will tell you, uh, I talked to a number of officers who were partners with some of these officers who have been shot. Mm -hmm. I mean, they went to the academy with them. They're troubled. And they said, I just want to get back and continue to do the work. It's remarkable. We appreciate the Detroit Police Thank Department. You. We here at Local 4 and the rest of the Metro Detroit community standing with you guys to make sure that we don't see tragedies like this happen again, anything that we can do. Right. So we thank you for your well, time. Well, we, we appreciate, appreciate you and, we, and especially giving us a forum to keep this out there. We've got to do something. We, uh, do. We're, we have a national crisis. We do. We certainly do. We'll be working together with you to see how we can make this stop. All right. Thank you so much thank for your you. time. Brandon, we'll send it over to you.